What's going on, guys? How are you doing today? My name is Chris, I'm you so and welcome back to another review. Only it's not another Kenobi review. It's just a review of Stranger Things Season 4. Um, I am going to put spoilers in this because this isn't a, like, thing for, uh, a thing. This is my reaction. So, boom. I might do no spoiler one. We'll see. I just wanted to get a spoiler one under my under my belt so I can kind of learn what spoilers and what's not. And then we'll do a non spoiler. Then we'll do a non spoiler. Anyway, so spoiler alert, big flags, red flags. Uh, anyway, so with Stranger Things season four, it was very good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. There are a few things that I feel like could have been made better. Um, I guess that we won't really see what the point of... I guess we do have a point of it, but we don't really have a real reason. I, I, I don't like how they made Max blind at the end. Because Vecna blinded Max right at the end, and then she died. But her she was still... like She had everything but her sight, which... Oh, I guess her arms and legs are broken, too. So, never mind. She wasn't in the same state as Eleven. Eleven almost had her eyes crushed, but, yeah. Anyway, um, so, there's one part, there's one part of the show that is completely and utterly irrelevant, and, I, and if, you've, if any of you have seen the show, most of you know what I'm talking about, and it is clearly the Joyce Hopper um, Russian segment, and the only, the, I think the only reason why that's a thing is for one to have a more of an in-depth conversation with Hopper because all we kind of get is that he's just this rugged police chief, kind of an asshole in season one, two, and three, just a really a, just a hard person just to get to know. He seems very closed off, very self, very, not self-centered. I don't want to say self-centered. He just seems very closed off to everyone in the first three seasons, and then you kind of see him grow a little bit during season three. And then you finally kind of get a real, like, character depth in season four. Because you kind of learn who he is, why he did, why he does what he does, why he's closed off. They give Hopper a character instead of just making him, like, the savior in the other two seasons, in the other three seasons. Um, I guess they did a little bit of that in season three, kind of building to this, because this show was or planned for four seasons since the beginning. Now they're planning for five, so I'm very excited about that. I think they led into the fifth season very well. Um, there's a few things that I wish they'd done. There's a few things that I'm a little bit picky on. I am glad that we had a little bit of plot armor around Max, but not enough to where it's like it's just pleasing to see. It's actually a little bit like M Empire is what I felt like at the end of the season. I'm not gonna lie. I felt like it. I felt like this this season was a lot like Empire, where the good guys don't win. And that's like that's what Mike said at the end. Is that Mike said that Elle's never lost. She's not or at least like this. And um he's totally right because so far the series has gone that they win every single time at the end of the season and then a new problem pops up a year later or something like that. But in this season, they don't win. They actually lose. And, like, Vecna's plan comes to life. And Vecna's still alive, too. <sighs> Sorry, this is one, one in the morning whenever I'm recording this. But Vecna's still alive and doing his thing. And Max is very out of commission. And Lucas is very scarred. Is, like, scarred. Uh, Mike is the only one with a level head. Kind of. Even at the end of season four, we see him a little bit kind of freaking out, you know? He's not totally there, especially from, like, so since Eleven and Joyce and Will and Jonathan all moved distance, the two biggest relationships in the show, um, at the time, uh, Jonathan and Nancy and um, Mike and Eleven, those two relationships started uh, kind of crumbling a little bit, kind of feeling a little bit off. Jonathan and Nancy kind of started growing apart. They started growing into two different people, or Jonathan grew into, like, the stoner boy, um, I don't know, kind of a little bit of a hippie. And then and Nancy kind of grew into a very self-centered, powerful woman. Which, I mean, 
me me sometimes I'll complain about uh, shows doing that where they kind of force that down your throat all like the girl power and stuff like that I like how in Stranger Things they don't do that but they still give Nancy a very strong character a very leadership role um, but the thing that they do well with Nancy's character is that they don't just make her a leadership role for the sake of making a strong female character they make Nancy a leadership role to um, make Steve a better person and or or to show how a more mature version of Nancy is realizing that Steve, who was very immature in season one, has grown over the course of the last two two or three seasons into a very uh, from a boy into a man, and I feel like that that is one of the biggest key factors. One of the biggest things in this season is that there's not just a strong. They're not just making a strong female character out of a weak female character at the beginning because Nancy was not exactly my cup of tea for what uh, the definition of a strong female character should be. Because if you go back to season one, you see Nancy kind of just fluttering around. You have her in a relationship with Steve, but then she gets mad at Steve, so she goes to Jonathan Byers because Jonathan's brother is trapped in the Upside Down, and so she's going out to help him do that, and then she can somehow shoot a gun. And I don't, remember, I don't remember what the reason was. I think it was because she was taken out shooting by a... Ah, fuck, who was it? I don't know. Apparently someone took her out shooting, but she, but she had a good, but she had a good shot. Um, but she was still very nervous, very, like, on the edge about what she could do. Like, you know, she, she wasn't, like, that strong female character like we see in, uh, in other TV shows um, at the time. Then over the course of the over the show in the season in the se- in the series we see her grow into that female character that a lot of people like to see and me personally I love to see that I, I like to see um, more main female roles being brought out because it's I don't know it's just a diverse it's, it's a diversity thing it's nice to be able to say that there are strong female ro- roles and then we can actually go back to more of an even more balanced um, Hollywood which is awesome I love it um but the, the but like I said, what they did well, what Stranger Things did well here, is that they didn't just make Nancy a better person. They proved through they proved that Nancy and Steve have grown together, and that Steve has actually grown from someone so immature that an immature Nancy, that an immature and weak and susceptible Nancy dumped him, to now to where Nancy is starting to see that Steve has grown as a person, and. That he is, um, I, I guess, more suitable is the right word, for lack of a better word. I don't know. More like he, he's he's matured. He's grown into more of a man. Like he's not just some high school idiot boy that is running around calling people sluts. And that's in the TV show. So please don't get mad at me, YouTube. Um, but yeah, that's what that's what it is. Is that like. And you see in the first season that Steve is very immature, calling Nancy names and doing all this, getting very, like, improperly mad, and everyone can agree with him. Nancy tries to stand up for him and ends up not standing up for herself, or standing up to Steve and ends up just kind of failing a little bit because um, then Jonathan had to step in, and then they fought, and then Jonathan was beating the crap out out of Steve. And then got arrested. (laughs) So they kind of lost that. Because both, everyone in that thing was immature. But then as we keep going through the show, those characters start becoming more and more adult-like. And and I'm talking about just these older characters, like the older characters, like Nancy, Steve, Jonathan. Because that's who we're seeing. That's who we're seeing grow into more of a man um, throughout the show. Uh, Mike and Will and Lucas and Dustin all grow as characters, but not in the same sense as we see seniors in high school go to freshmen in college, if you know what I mean. If you've ever met someone that's just getting out of high school and going into the real world, you know exactly what I mean. And I'm I'm not meaning to brag, but I'm seeing it personally myself, in my own actions and in others. Um, even my own friends, a lot of them are... Grow- are becoming more mature as I see them kind of get out of high school and kind of go into more of an adult life. It's nice to see it. But then, um, 
God damn, I am eating a belly. That's crazy. It's all right. It's just distracting. It's like crumpling as I'm like leaning forward. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, you see that kind of happening. You see, then you see throughout the series, you see these characters making their own decisions, making their own um, calls, kind of being more leaders in the group. Whereas um, the four kids, Mike, Dustin, Lucas, and uh, Will, are having that imaginary mind, and they're growing into the the teen. They're growing into those immature teenagers, but after being after growing out of being immature kids. And immature kids and immature teenagers are very different things because an immature kid is a or an immature teenager is a mature kid. So these um, these kids are growing into teenagers and like they're getting girlfriends and they're starting to um, kind of expand their friend group. They're trying to impress other people, as we see in season four with Lucas. Um, and I feel like that's kind of strong to see those that friend group of those four kind of fall out a little bit because of uh, diversing interests. Because you have Lucas kind of wanting to go do basketball and wanting to go do more sports things. And then you have um, Will wanting to stay in that kind of bubble, those that, that small bubble of those four, just in the basement playing D&D all day. And, um, but then he grows through season four and realizes, well, that's not actually what all, not what life's all about. Life's about growing and learning who you are. And that's the most interesting part about Will is that he's the only one that realizes this, is that, um, there's a lot about Will that's completely unpacked, that's, or that's not unpacked yet, because we just don't, he's so secretive. He's so in his own head. It's so it's so incredible to watch the cinematography go on and just see what's going on inside of Will's head just through this, the, the, the angle that you're seeing. Because you're seeing Will talk to Mike in the, in the bus, I think in the second to last episode, or in the last episode, um, just talking to Mike about how he's, um, he's the heart of the group, right? And that's because, and like, it's on that L made him draw, but... He, but Mike's the heart of the group, and he's talking about that, like that whole scene. Yeah, and then you see Will break down crying. Like that, I, I don't know what that means. And it's so mind, like it's such a decision for the for the audience. It's incredible how they show that. And it's, I like, it, for me personally, this is how I'm taking it. And as an, for an audience choice for that, I feel like that this is fine for me to take this opinion. But, um... With that, with that whole thing, it's either like they're diversing more into the um, that, that uh, diversity content, making maybe making Will gay. Which I mean, fine. They've never hinted at him being gay, but they also never hinted at him being straight before either. He's never gone after a girl. Never really been interested. He just he sees Elle as a sister. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know. I feel like that he. I feel like that for Will. It. I don't know if it's more of like a sexual. I don't. I don't think it's a sexual preference thing. I don't think it's like a gay or straight thing at all. I think it's more that he is a very, very like he has um, attachment issues a little bit because if you watch through the next episode, it kind of confirms that because it's Will starting to see Jonathan kind of fade away a little bit and. During and then you see Joyce fade away a little bit because she's going crazy over Hopper, and that's whenever Will breaks down. Will breaks down because Mike isn't really there with him. Elle isn't really there with him because they're too focused on each other. Jonathan isn't there with him because he's too busy getting stoned, and Joyce isn't there with him because she's too busy worrying about Hopper. So it's just Will alone, and Will has not been alone ever. Like in that in that kind of family sense, you know, he's always had his brother, he's always had his mom, he's always had Mike, Dustin, and Lucas. He's always had other people to go to about his problems or about what's going on with him. But now he's kind of a little bit of a loner. And um, there's a TikTok actually out there. I don't know where it is, but um, on the day that uh, Eleven took Mike roller skating, that was Will's birthday. And no one remembered it. And we see in the previous seasons that they did, but they almost forgot it. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of like a thing that Will's 
kind of being forgotten. And it'd be really cool to see if it's all a like schizophrenic a schizophrenic thing for Will after being in the Upside Down. Like, if the Mind Flayer is just messing with his mind, and then he wakes up and the whole world's destroyed because of him, that'd be insane. But, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. Because um, they technically won after Season 3, whenever Eleven closed the last gate. Um, or whenever Eleven killed the Mind Flayer. Uh... That was kind of the last straw for the whole thing. And Eleven killed the Mind Flayer, or the Mind Flayer died, and then, um, yeah. All the gates were closed. There was no way for Vecna to get out. But then Vecna was just like, yeah, well, if I'm not going to have my portals, I'm just going to make my own. So he does. And then, yeah, then he tears a hole in the world. Um, he snaps it. He snaps the pencil, like the guy said. But, um, what's really interesting about that is, um, how throughout the entire show, they kind of lead up to that. They lead up to the fact that it is Vecna watching the entire time. Just, he doesn't really come out as the main guy until the end. And you see it in the flashback with him to the Mind Flayer after they, after she, after he gets shocked with, like, the lightning and after getting sent to the Upside Down... And the whole world isn't actually what he imagined. It's whenever, um... The whole world isn't as everyone imagined. It's exactly as it was whenever the first gate was opened. But, um... Whenever one got there, it was less. It was different. You see all the demodogs and the demogorgon just crawling around. It's a world unscathed by man, as he put it. And so then Vecna, or one, or Henry, goes and, I, I guess, makes it his own. And then that's what he wants to do with the regular world, even though he doesn't live there. It's kind of a weird motive for being a supervillain in this, in this thing. I, I don't know. There's a lot of motive that's weird for it. Um, because, like, he's living in a world unscathed by man, and he could easily just not connect himself with the main world, but he does anyway. I, I, I don't know, it's just, it just kind of blows my mind a little bit about that. And then the whole force battle with him and, with him and Eleven is a little weird, because, yes, Vecna's stronger, but the thing is, is that if they're moving stuff with their mind... Why would it be um, weird for them to ha to like? Why do they have to have their hands go forward and do all this magic hand stuff for them to actually move stuff? You know, I mean, if they can move stuff with their mind, they should just be able to do this and like look at where they want to where they want it to go, or maybe like whenever their hands are like tied like that, like how Eleven's were, whenever she was being crucified. Um, she, like, I don't know. There's got to be something that they do. Because they can't just be, like, force coming out of the hand like, um... Like a Jedi does. Even though a Jedi doesn't even do that. Like, a Jedi can use the force just, like, just the same way. <sighs> it's kind of weird. And also, like, it, their, their powers are so weird because it's not just that. Like, they can make a light go around in a circle as long as the lights are lined up on that circle. It's like they can move light. Um, they can heal people. They can bring people back to life. Like, that's what Elle did with Max. And, um, I don't know. There's just a lot to unpack with that. And, yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying is that, like, there's just so many different small things that are so unanswered about Stranger Things, and I, they were only going to do four seasons. They planned for four seasons, and I think they did it beautifully. They left so much unanswered to where everyone, if they, if they didn't do a season five, everyone would be all over it forever. It would be perfect. It, like, everyone would be questioning, like, um, like, where do these people get their powers? Like, what is this? What is that? What is that? What is that? 
Like, if someone saw it, like, in 10 years and was like, wait, but what is this? Like, no one would be able to answer it. It's insane. Like, you'd only be guessing about what it is. Never be confirmed. I'm almost kind of sad they're doing a season five because as much as I want to see more Stranger Things, what I want to see is all these people going berserk online about how Eleven got her powers or what or how Ele- how the powers are fueled. You know, like, we get a little bit of that answer in season four. We get it that oh, this guy wanted um, to replicate one's powers. So he steals kids and then makes them do all these tests and stuff. But we still don't know how they got their powers and, like, how they learned how to... Like, we get to how they learned how to use them, but we don't understand how he knew that that was like that. It's almost like the beginning of the Jedi Order. Like, at the very beginning of time, whenever they first learned that the Force was a thing. Like, the first person... Like, the first person to ever use the Force was just like, oh, I can do this now. And then they got to know where... Like, this old guy comes up and swoops him up and says, no, I'm going to teach you how to do it. And then teaches you, teaches you, but doesn't actually teach you. Just learns that you're crazy and psychotic. And then shoves you in a room, puts you with no power, and then replicates the power by trying to find other people with that power. And then taking them, and then making them not an actual person. You know, just making them a weapon. It's, re- it's really weird. Like, and so much of it is so messed up. It's so crazy. Like, this guy was stealing kids. Like, I swear to you, one of the kids was, like, six years old. Like, he looked so young in those scenes. And they killed him. Like, there's literally a scene where the kid, who's, like, six years old, has his eyes crushed into his head. Like, bruh, (laughs) that is insane. That is some dark shit, bro. Anyway, um, that's kind of my biggest thing, is that they talk, they, they do all this stuff, and they do all that, and whew, it's just kind of crazy what they all do, and kind of going to the, the kid, like, I don't know, I, I like the show overall, it was very good, and like I said, there's so much left unanswered, there's so much that got answered, I love every piece that wasn't answered, I love every piece that was answered, um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot that I didn't cover in this video specifically. But this is me just kind of rambling about the season. I enjoyed it. I'm trying to cover as much as I can, I guess, too. I really did enjoy it, though. It was a good season. Um, I'm excited for season five. I hope they do actually do it. But I almost hope they don't. Because I want to see everyone just kind of like, wait, what? Because, yeah. <sighs> <sighs> I don't know. Definitely feels like it's um kind of getting dragged on, and I am like Millie's getting older. Mike and them are all like Millie's getting like I said, Mike, Millie's getting older, so it's gonna be harder to make her seem younger in those scenes. So I get why they did um the scenes with her like that now. Um. Because the the more that those uh, actor, uh, those actors, actors and actresses grow up, the harder it is to actually film those. How old are they, by the way? I want to, I want to see how old those actors are. How old is Bobby Brown? I'm only looking at Millie Bobby Brown because she's eighteen. She's eighteen. What? She's old, she's a year younger than I am. Say, dude, the girl who plays Max is twenty. Never mind, they're not kids. Never mind, I thought they were way younger. Holy fuck. Finn Wolfhard, the guy who plays Mike, is uh, 19. He's my age. He's older than me. What What the shit? That's not fair. I mean, he's a great actor. Don't get me wrong. She was 15 in the show, but she's 19, or she's 18 in real life. Who's this guy? But Sadie Sink is 20. Holy shit, I did not know that. That's crazy. I thought she was way, she looks really young. Damn. 
She's 20? I'm... That's mind-blowing. Holy crap. They found some good... They found some hits for that stuff. Holy shit. To portray, like, kids, like, 15-year-old kids, and they got 20-year-olds? That's insane. I mean, Mike looks older. Mike looks like he's... He could be older. He definitely does look like... Or, um... Wolfhard looks like he could be older. But he also looks like he could be younger, too. He's just tall-ish. I don't know how tall the guy... I don't know how, I don't know how tall the guy is. Finn Wolfhard. I don't know how tall he is, but... I mean, like, he looks like he could be older. And they're definitely going to those carpet events as more adults than they are kids because if <sighs> well, Stranger Things 1 came out like what 5 years ago so they would have all been kids Stranger Things started 2016 so 6 years ago so yeah they would have all been kids they, all of them would have been kids what is Gaten Matarzo how old is he he has 16 million followers He's 18. Sixteen million followers. He does live he does have a thing with his teeth, but I mean it fits the character so well. It fits Dustin's character so well, and it's great. And by the way, Dustin and Steve's relationship is top tier. Don't ever at me. If you if you told me that Dustin and Steve's bromance is not the best thing in the world, you're wrong. Season 4 makes it so clear that Steve and Dustin are the best duo ever. At least in um, completely creative stuff. As like, like, or like newly creative stuff that's not extreme pop culture. It's like obviously Stranger Things is pop culture, but I'm talking like legendary status pop culture. Like stuff that has withstood the times. Like, I'm talking like Star Wars and Marvel type shit. Like, Stranger Things is 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 I so far because it's had four seasons over the last six years. It was doing well, but it ain't there yet. It's not there yet. We're, we need a little bit more time for it to like develop, you know. And then then we'll see if it's at the legendary status. I don't think it will be. I don't think so. Like as much as I love Stranger Things, I don't think it's gonna get there. Like obviously, like Marvel, DC, Star Wars, all probably gonna all probably there. Because they're still making movies on DC, they're still making movies on, movies on Marvel, they're still making movies on Star Wars, and they're probably not going to stop because they make money. But for a very, 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 very creative show, an extremely creative show that I have not seen anything like before, Stranger Things is an amazing idea that someone cooked up in their brain and birthed this amazing TV show. It's been a wild four seasons, a wild experience, because every single time I go into this show, I don't know what to expect. Every time. And I am there for it every time. Season three, there is so much that I was just, like, mind-blown by, and I was like, oh, my God, what is going on? Season two, not as much mind-blowing, but a lot of fun to watch a lot of fun to watch Will go through that whole like shebang. And then season one, don't even get me started. Season one was I wish I could go back and watch season one for the first time again. I wish I remembered it like to make like it was yesterday because oh my god, it was so good to watch that. Like I remember watching it a little bit for the first time. I don't remember it too well, but I remember it enough to know that I was that I enjoyed watching it. Like it's one of those shows. To where, like, you go kind of think about how you felt while you're watching it, and you're like, I enjoyed watching that. Like, I enjoyed watching Stranger Things. I would watch it again, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I, I would, but it's, I, there's too much to do. There's too much to watch, too much to catch up on, too much to do in general. Um, but yeah. Oh, and one more thing. Um, before I end the video, because I'm going to give my ratings in just a second in another clip I recorded just a little bit earlier after I recorded but you just saw anyway um <laughs> um Eddie 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 I was thinking about everyone I, I really wasn't doing much about the season four characters specifically because a lot of them were very very forgettable but one thing that I wanted to do is, that I forgot to mention is Eddie's character Eddie Munson Eddie Munson's character is amazing and I liked it however whenever uh I heard 
so I was talking to someone before I actually watched the show. They said someone died, and I was like, okay, probably, probably it's the end of a TV show that was very popular. Probably someone's most likely gonna die to make everyone all emotional. He was like, and I was like, is it Will? He was like, I fucking wished. <laughs> um, and then Eddie died, and I was just like, oh, because I, I liked Eddie's character, but I mean, I don't know. Eddie is just. It was a fun character to have, but I felt like that in this season, in this series, it was right for Eddie to go. And not because I didn't like him, but because it was just fitting. It wasn't fitting for anyone else to go because all the other kids are cowards. Let's be real. They all go up there and they try and fight the thing, but all they do is kind of throw tomatoes at it and then hope that El- then hope that Eleven kind of does her thing. Um. But yeah, that's that's kind of where it all is, is that it's all about Eleven kind of being the brave one and not about the kids, even though the, it seem, makes it seem like the kids are being brave by kind of going up and seeing everything. But that's more for their knowledge, so they can kind of create some sort of um, imaginary thing in their mind to um, help, I guess. It kind of makes it more... It makes it a little bit better, in in my opinion. It makes it so the kids actually have a purpose, and, like, you can relate to those kids. Which makes sense. That's how it should be. That's that's exactly what it should be like. But anyway, um, let's see. The, um, the part that Eddie had is I loved the Metallica scene. Uh, I loved that, uh, part of it, because it was just, it was so crisp and so put right. And so awesome. It was such, like, a... It was such a cinematic thing, and having him play Master of Puppets just fit it so well, fit the whole scene, everything was going on in that scene so well. Anyway, that's all I'll talk about, and now to the ratings. See ya. <clears throat> um, if I was going to show a rating, I would probably give it a, um, or not the show, the, the, the season rating. I'd probably give Stranger Things Season 4, you know what, I'm going to give all four of them a rating, because I haven't actually done any of the other four or the other three so season one i'm gonna give a uh nine out of ten it was good very creative idea established characters very well had a few character arcs and then also had a really good cliffhanger leaving into the next uh season which even though it wasn't as entertaining was very uh was very good and answered some questions about uh what was going on and how it was going on and how it was happening but not all of them I give season two a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, Because season three didn't have anything leading into it, but still had um, a very good plot, I didn't really care about it too much because it didn't really advance anything besides the fact that Billy died. Um, There wasn't really any character development besides between Hopper and Joyce and Mike and Elle. Um, because Elle didn't really develop anything, Mike developed a little bit, but not really mu- too much. The friends developed a little bit, but they just kind of grew into more persons, I guess, more people than the others. Um, so I'm going to give this that one probably about a six. Season three got a six from me. And then season four, uh, because it was so good, everything was kind of tied together very well. Um, it almost felt like that season three was a sophomore flop instead of season four, which is very, uh, which is an okay sign. Season four was really good, though. I thought that season two was a sophomore flop, and then season three kind of hit it really hard, too. It kind of went downhill after season one, but then season four ramped it up again. Um, made Steve and Dustin a very, very, but a very, very dynamic duo. Um, gave them a lot of points to hit on. Gave Steve a good, a good part, too. So I'm going to give season four... And 8.6 out of 10. 8.6. And only because it it's still following the idea of the beginning. It's still the same idea. It's very creative. But I think that the very that the very first season gets the 9, gets the extra point four because or the extra whatever you want to call it, 8.5. Let's just do easy math. It gets the extra half point because of that creativity that came out with then. Uh, anyway... Thank you all very much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed these reviews, leave a comment down below how I could improve them because I'm going to do more of them and you can't stop me. It's my show. My fucking show. 
This is my fucking show. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And as always, never sit in the pool. Very important. Anyway, see you in the next one. Peace out.